Sure. How you doing, bro? Hey, brother. How are you? Not too bad. I uh, see you got a sweatshirt. Must be cold down there. Yeah, it's a little chilly today, man. Uh, I just thought I'd do it outside. Figured it might be uh, just a different, uh, a different look. But uh, yeah, it's a little chilly. Well, we've had our little bits of chilliness uh, a couple of days ago. It was actually below thirty. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. That. I think Florida got that cold, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Once in a while, it'll uh, it'll freeze over, and farmers they go crazy with their crops. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, let's uh, let's just jump right in if that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Tactics, uh, techniques, and mindset, huh? Yeah. So um, you know, the first uh, two sessions we did, we're we're just kind of chronologically um, documenting your life. Now I want to just kind of dive in and 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 get between your ears and see. Uh, see what's there so uh and there's nothing there <laughs> yeah so, so this will be a quick this will be a quick video hey we're doing it <laughs> no i'm kidding um uh, well you know i got mad respect for you um as a martial artist i mean you're there's so many different um levels of our relationship we were kind of talking about that last night uh, back and forth in text um one of the the greatest impacts you've had on me quite honestly has been through the martial arts i think you know that um you know and so i just want to kind of take a moment and uh, first say appreciate uh, you dedicate your life to something that has literally touched thousands of people. And then when you look at the, uh, after you get up after that direct impact, you got to look at the indirect impact of all the black belts that you've, uh, that you've been able to pour into change their, their trajectory uh, within the martial arts. And, and, and quite frankly, because of that, the generational uh, effect you've had on martial arts is, is, Pretty impressive, um, and uh, what a humbling opportunity is it for me to get to kind of pick your brain and just kind of talk about some of the fun stuff, um, sure. you know, and get an idea of where you're at. So let's just kind of start off with some of the stuff I think some of the just practitioners of martial arts would like to know. So, what's your favorite aspect of, of martial arts? Oh, I love the self defense, if, if that's what you're referring to. Uh, okay. I mean, as far as uh, the different aspects of the martial arts of uh, Number one is great for uh, for medicinal purposes, keeps your mind, your body uh, the way it's supposed to be. I'm a little chunk. Sorry about that. I'm chunky right now, but uh, you know, certain certain things that uh, kept me from from working out the way I should. However, uh, it keeps your mindset. One that's one thing. If uh, uh, over the past few years I had gone through a tremendous amount of uh, anxiety and uh, you know, the loss of, of Judy and that kind of thing. And right. so I jumped right into my martial arts and that kept me straight. And so uh, people I totally get that, you know, I mean, when you look at uh, it's interesting because, you know, people come into our gyms and they ask us all the time, you know, if we can solve problem, whatever, whatever their problem. And it's so oh, the answer is yes, is what I, I mean. It, bottom line, I don't care if it's anxiety, if it's self-esteem, self-confidence, I'm too big, I'm too small. Um, whatever, whatever's going on, what I've learned is, man, martial arts is a great, uh, a great solution uh, to all that junk. And I know like with my brain injury, when I, threw, when I went through that, uh, by getting back in the martial arts, I believe two things. One, on the front end of that, I think my brain healed quicker because of how it's been developed because of martial arts. And then I think secondly, uh, my recovery was quicker because of the martial arts. When I do it back into training, um, that coordination of mind and body and spirit, man, it's there's nothing like it. And quite honestly, um, when you talk about the self-defense aspect, um, the reality of my situation was when I was being drugged by that car, there were there was a voice in my head, and that was yours saying, "Don't quit." Um, and you know, I know you've had that rippling impact because I've heard my students come back and tell me the same thing that that when they were going through junk, they they were hearing the audible voice of their instructor, me or um, other instructors speaking into them. And so when you're talking about dealing with the, the mindset, let's talk, let's kind of dive into that for a minute. So if you were to encapsulate mindset um, in, in one or two sentences, what would you say the, the, the right mindset is for approaching learning martial arts? Well, first of all, you have to have the hunger for it. Uh, we have, uh, you've, you've had a lot of students and I've had a lot of students. They, uh, come in and say, oh, they want to be a black belt. And, uh, you know, I said, okay, well, here's one. I'll sell it for you for five ninety five. <laughs> right. right. And, Just get over with it. Yeah. yeah. I said, that it, it takes a lot more than that. Uh, so what I try to do is uh, 
you know, explain what basics are all about, what is expected of them, uh, the dedication that they must put into it. Uh, I hate to say, it, but there's a lot of students nowadays that uh, they have fallen into the wrong kind of uh, studios where things are handed to them on a silver platter. And I've inherited a few of those and um, I've had, uh, uh, I've got three that have come from those studios that they are liking it more and more because it's just not going through the motions. Um, we do real life, life and death uh, situations. Right. And uh, so it's, it's kind of cool. So when you, when you think about mindset, um, when you're trying to instill the, the mindset to survive or win on the street, what, what do you focus on? on? What, what, what is your go-to when you teach that? Well, I, I always go back to, uh, to my past and, uh, you know, because my mindset, if it wasn't where it's supposed to be, I would have died in Vietnam. Uh, right, right. So we, we practice on, on just about everything and, uh, I'll bring in, it's a red gun, of course. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll put up, uh, I'll put a gun to, to one of the kids' uh, head. And my youngest uh, student, uh, he's going to be turning 10 years old uh, next week. And uh, he's from Russia. And so I'll put, a, I'll put a gun to his head and I'll scream at him, just like, just like a perp would do. And uh, these kids are not, they're, they're, they're not accustomed to anything of this nature. They don't know what uh, controversy means. So I put them in a position where uh, they are in, where they have to think. I've got uh, one young lady, she's 15, had taken a diff another style many years ago in New York. And when she came down here, she knew right away that she did not want to take any of the classes in this area because it was give me, give me promotions. So I put her in a position, uh, she was only a white belt. Um, I, I let, told her lay down on the floor and uh, pretend that you're going to go to sleep. One of the other students jumped her and straddled her as if she was being raped. Um, and that put her in a whole new area. Her father definitely enjoys what we do. And um, yeah, it's uh, what I try to, I, I, I try to shock them into what the real life is all about. I said, when you're leaving this studio, you're going out there, I cannot hold your hand. Mom and dad cannot hold your hand. Uh, so you have to be prepared 100%. So what do you think, um, when, when we're talking about uh, mindset specifically, what, what, is, what does it mean to be a black belt? Uh, what it means to be a black belt is, is, it's, is to know your, your background, your teacher's background, the style's background, what puts all of that together uh, at the same time, what does an individual wish to accomplish? Uh, there are certain guidelines to become a black belt and um, folks don't understand that uh, at one time, the black belt was just a dirty belt. Right, and, uh, white belt got dirty. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and so uh, I try, on, in my studio, I'm not in there, I'm in my office now. I've got different sayings on the wall. I said, every one of those, leadership, guidance, motivation, uh, honesty, th you know, things that, uh, that take an individual. I said, you have to know exactly what those are. And one individual said, well, why? I said, well, first of all, you should not even ask that question. That why business? You should already have that instilled. Do you say, are you polite to your parents? Are you polite to your teachers? Are you polite to yourself? They have no idea what being polite to yourself is. I said, uh, uh, and one of the kids was very honest. He says, no, I don't like me. I said, why did you come up with that? I don't know. He's just depressed. I said, do you think you're a good guy? Oh, sometimes. I said, well, what you need to do is look in the mirror and tell yourself exactly how good you really are and believe it. Uh, he did that. And his whole mindset from a negative to a positive had changed within a couple of weeks. And uh, I still get on this case. You know, I don't, I don't baby anybody. So right. when, when they see me perform, I'm an old man. I'm an old fat guy. But when they see me perform, they, <laughs> you know, was that you? You feel better? 
Ah, it's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he's made it hungry. <laughs> no, there's there's dogs <laughs> running around my feet being idiots. <laughs> no problem. But uh, anyway, when you get an old fat guy doing what they're doing, what I do, they uh, they they look at that and I said, now, why is it at my age of seventy two, I don't even do any huffing and puffing. You guys, you've only been working out for fifteen minutes. And you got to stop and catch your breath. What is wrong with that? I says a black belt does not have that luxury. Well, what do you mean? I said, okay, well, we got one individual over here. Um, uh, he's had come from another style and he's uh, 12 years old and he's going to be the first black belt that I'm a, that I'm a, I'll promote here. Uh, he come from another style that was just pushing right along. So he wanted something more. So now I said, now you have the rest of you have to look like him. And I said, well, we can't look like him. I said, yes, you can. As a matter of fact, I want you to be better than me. Oh, that's impossible. No, only if you think it is. I said, what you have to understand, I'm not going to be around here forever. And so somebody's got to pick up, pick up my footing, my, you know, what I have to offer to you and to the next generation that's coming along. They go, wow. That's some heavy shoes. I said, well, yes and no, yes and no. But what you have to do is make sure that what you have up here, it also relates what you have in here. They go hand in hand. So what do you think is the biggest difference between a, a black belt and a, and a master of the arts? Well, a master of the arts is a black belt. A lot of folks, they don't understand that. Uh, I tell individuals, you can be a master at every particular level. And they say, oh, that's impossible. I said, well, think about it. All right, you start off with white belt. You have to know so many techniques as a white belt. What do I tell you that you have to do when you get promoted to the next belt up? Well, oh, keep practicing. I said, no, you master everything below. All right, our first promotion is uh, for a color is a purple. All right, so now when you get to that, all right, what I want to, what I want you to be able to do is tell me every little aspect that you learned as a white belt. You got the Shoshin Shikata, all right? I want you to give me the bunkai, the practical application. What is it in there, or I should say, what is not in there that you physically cannot see that you have to put in there? And they said, well, what do you mean? I said, okay, there are some, you, you have to read between the lines. You make a move from here to there, and you have to add things in there to make sense out of the entire thing. Uh, a lot of folks, they say, well, you know, uh, bunkai is there, bunkai is that. I said, well, that's cool, whatever. And um, I said, bunkai can change in a heartbeat. He said, well, how can that happen? I said, okay, what I want you to do is explain what you're doing with the bunkai here as, as a master. All right, I'm going to move over here, and then you can do the same technique. Well, I have to change. That's the point. Bunkai has now changed. And as a master, a, a purple belt master, doesn't mean that you're, gonna, you're a master of karate. You have to be a master of that one particular belt. Now, a master in the, uh, in the black belt, that individual has to know every little detail about everything from the beginning up to his present rank. Uh, a lot of folks, they, they just don't understand that when you become a martial artist, you're a, you're a student until the day you die. You've always got that extra to, to, to learn. Hopefully you don't so hear the siren. I'm sorry, what? Okay, it stopped. I had uh, nuclear siren on my phone. Oh, okay. So what do you think? Is, uh, tell me the difference between a, a master and a grandmaster. A grandmaster, if they practice right. They take everything very smooth. You'll never even know if, they, if they're a martial artist or not, because the way that they move is completely different than the young pups uh, trying to break their bones as they get up there. Um, they walk, they talk uh, like cool, all right? I like to use the word uh, like the fawns. If you ever watched, <laughs> all right, Happy Days, hey, yeah, the fine. Yeah, cool. the young people have a clue what you're talking about, but go I ahead. Know, I'm with you. I know. <laughs> if, well, if they're, they're, they're happy. Happy. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, 
I can not to, not to brag, but I've got my stuff together as far as my techniques. I'm very fast with my hands, not my feet. And uh, but I don't walk down, you know, walk up and down the street like a dog would say, "Come here, kitty, kitty, kitty." Uh, but a young punk will do that. So the grandmaster uh, has respect for life, uh, respect for his friends. He has respect for his enemies. And a lot of these younger folks, well, I don't respect my enemies. I said, well, then you better not respect yourself. Right. So, uh, yeah. So uh, when, when somebody called me grandmaster years ago, I felt deeply honored. I didn't think I was worthy and I still don't, but when you, you when I can when I conduct myself, I try to conduct it as not being better than thou. Um, I've got I've got some super parents, and uh, they they appreciate what I do for their kids. And um, this one girl uh, that I mentioned, they've already seen a difference in her, and uh, more confidence and what she is becoming is what I used to be. And the longer she stays with me, she will become my equal. And then who knows, she might even take over the system after I die. That'll be cool. You know, it's interesting because I, it's, I hear the same thing when I talk to black belts and, and specifically masters and grandmasters, I hear the same theme over and over again. I don't hear you talking about a punch or a kick. I don't no. hear you talking about, um, you know, how badass you are, excuse my French, or, or how badass your system is, or which system is better than that system. What I hear is the life changing impacts in the heart and mind of your students. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I love mindset, but I'm going to, I'm going to transition into an area that's somewhat controversial nowadays. It's strange to me that's controversial, but self-defense. So, um, you know, the world is, my gosh, you know, I, I sound I sound like my dad. I sound like old people like you when I say, uh, man, the world is so much more dangerous nowadays than it was when I was a kid. But it really is. And it's not I, I don't buy into the uh, the line that it's uh, the world's gotten faster. I, I just I, I think the world truly is getting more violent as we come into the end times. And, it is. you know, so we look at um, we look at the spiritual side of martial arts. Uh, this is this is kind of a controversial area. You know, I'm a Christian. You know that. I mean, I work at a church. You're a Christian. Um, but we study it's often I get asked questions about when well, you study this this eastern um you know mumbo jumbo or or you you know specifically with me I study Krav Maga and, and that's my main art that I teach and you know oh you must be Jewish then everybody wants to attach mm -hmm. a faith to what they prescribe we do. Um talk about the the spiritual side of martial arts for a minute. Tell me Tell me what, what it's done for you spiritually. How does it, how do the martial arts interfere with or complement your, your Christian faith? Well, the word spiritual and the Okinawans, uh, we don't use the, the word spiritual as far as the dojo, the school, because uh, the spiritual there, we're walking in the same footsteps as all of the masters that have come and gone. They're the ones that made it. Now, uh, with, with the training, it keeps my head straight. It keeps it strong. So when I go to church, when I pray to the Lord, you know, Jesus Christ, uh, my convictions are very strong. I do not, I do not force my religion onto somebody else because uh, in the school we have uh, uh, Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints people. We've got Catholics, uh, and everybody has their own their own viewpoints. Uh, we bow to some pictures of grandmasters, my teachers and so forth. Those are not idols, all right? Uh, we do not pray to those idols. Uh, they're pictures and we're just giving ultimate respect. Years ago, I had one. Uh, I'm sorry? A bow is like a handshake to you then. Exactly, exactly. And uh, we had, oh gosh, um, Several years ago, I had some students from uh, from Pakistan, and um, we would bow to my teacher. His picture was on the on the board on the uh, altar, and uh, the parents says, "Well, we really don't want our children to bow to that person. There, we don't know him, but we know you. You're right here." 
all right? You're flesh and blood, and we have no problem with that. I said, well, okay, well, what we'll start doing, we'll just bow to the to whoever's standing right here. She says, well, hopefully you're always going to be there. I said, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, we've had another family, very Christian. Uh, oh, I can't think of the word now. Um, oh, gee whiz. When we would meditate, they said, no, we don't meditate. It's against our religion. I said, okay. I mean, I have plenty of argument on that. I said, do you pray? Do you read the Bible? Well, of course we do. That's you meditate on the word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they were taking it completely out of context as if it was a Satan uh, thing. I yeah, said, it's, it's strange to me that, that people get so bent out of shape on, on it when it's not. They just don't, they don't want to. I don't know. I think a lot of times people take out of context what we do. Um, they do. They really do. They think they, we're a, a cult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and speaking of that, I mean, I, 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 you know, it's funny because uh, a relationship like ours that goes back decades. Um, <laughs> you and I have seen, we, we've traveled together. Mm -hmm. We've drank together. Uh, we've been to crazy together. Um, you br bring up the word cult and I just have to chuckle. I'm not going to mention where we were at. I'm not going to mention which order. <laughs> <laughs> you know, exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> so, um, you know, <laughs> I don't even let me, let me ask this question this way. Uh, you don't make me go get you a plate of food or or or, or serve you in any way. Like that master, do you? No, no. no. Some, um, some people get carried away. They get carried away, don't they? Oh yes. Oh yeah. I mean, if you know, you hold up a plate or a fork, and all of a sudden it disappears, and here comes a new one. Uh, you know. <laughs> We no, see some crazy stuff. Uh, <laughs> well, I told that's, you, I felt extremely, un yeah. No, I told you, I felt extremely uncomfortable in that environment. I said, this, I've spent some time, a lot of time in, in Japan, Okinawa, and I have yet to see that with the real grand masters over there. Uh, yeah. They will drink. And, yeah. And, and those guys can actually, the, the funny thing with what I've come to find is the people that were like that gentleman. They're not really capable. Maybe they were back in the day. Mm -hmm. They're not really capable anymore. And, and that's one thing I think is very different between our association. Because, um, I mean, we're, we're a unique association. The fact that we're a whole bunch of different systems and a whole bunch of different styles all crammed together with a bunch of different rank structures and uh, all that. But, um, there, you know, there, we, we've got a different kind of mojo with our system because it's it's equal mutual respect. I mean, I remember you telling me once uh, uh, a lot of people wear black belts. Uh, few people uh, earn black belts and even fewer people uh, become black belts and, and uh, you know I, I look at a lot of those guys that are wrapped up into the honor me and and tradition I'm going to use the word tradition I don't I don't mean it the way that we know tradition to be mm -hmm. they're flawed um, what do you think about and I know beyond just our travels together. There's a lot of guys and girls out there that are just fake. I mean, the guy. I mean, one of my former students that I, I had unfortunately strip his black belt from him because of just the nonsense. Uh, you know, you probably know where I'm going with this. He he's a 10-3 black belt now. Uh, he was a 10-3 black belt uh, weeks, literally weeks after I stripped him his first degree black belt, um, and he throws ten stripes on his belt, starts teaching down the street for me. Oh yeah. What do you think about? about the idling of masters and grandmasters and and these these fake black belts and these dojos that, that put stuff out there I, and I, I i want some i want some uncensored bill rank in the grandmaster what do you think about that kind of nonsense i think these people should well <laughs> you're not gonna yeah. go there on it <laughs> yeah I, mean, I could get i can get a rope with uh put 13 knots on it and but that, that would be cool. That's not me. Uh, I know. These individuals should be stripped uh, of, of anything that they have right now. Uh, years ago, I had one young person from somewhere in Louisiana wanted to join the association. I said, okay, how old are you? He said, I'm 22. I said, okay, no problem. Um, what you need to do is fill out the application. And he did. And I'm looking at it. He called himself a, a grandmaster at, eight year, at, at eighth degree. I'm going, huh, how many grandkids you have? Well, I'm too young to have grandkids. But you're an eighth degree grandmaster, you said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've started my own style. And yeah, so, well, you promoted yourself? Well, yeah. I said, sorry, we uh, 
we don't take false uh, false uh, uh, things of this nature. Uh, if it's ego, then I, I know a, uh, an organization that they they'll take every everything. But we will yeah. not. And um, if uh, well, there's there's been several individuals that had come aboard that looked like they had legitimate papers. Uh, I do investigations on them, and uh, as soon as I find out that it's bunk, I get rid of them. And I, I get the word around this is before you came came aboard. Um, you do all the investigation now for me. Thank you. <laughs> and <laughs> so, no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I've got uh, I've got other ways to do investigations, too. And so we don't we what we want to do is keep our our, you know, our ranks uh, the way it's supposed to be honorable uh in good tradition and um trustworthy above everything else and some of these yeah. individuals yeah yeah and it's just so, like uh it's just like our hall of fame uh yeah. one year one of the school operators uh decided that he was going to put in all of his students i said okay are they very good are they outstanding are they worthy of induction Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I said okay. There was about fifteen, maybe twenty white belts, very young kids. I didn't know that. And then, so they got their awards, and afterwards, he said, "Oh, that really helped their ego." I said, "Excuse me." Hmm. Yeah, and they needed something to boost their ego. I said, "That's your job." I said, "That's what a teacher is supposed to do." But you, what you did. You dirtied the name of our association. You dirtied the name of all of these individuals that actually got the award. Oh, I can I can get on the soapbox on that. And right, yeah, uh, so I'm not about that. Over the years is how to how to stop the nonsense of self promotion. I don't I don't get it. Um, I don't think I'll ever get it. Um, I'm less politically correct than you are, um, <laughs> so I just call people out. <laughs> um, yeah. Probably why I don't have a lot of friends, uh, Grandmaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's okay. So let's talk about some lighter stuff. Uh, let's talk about kata. Uh, you know, sure. you know. It, sure. Interesting thing is, is that, that, that again, uh, the 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 variety of backgrounds in our organization is, which by the way, I find it as the most legitimate testing of a black belt. This is just my, my opinion, and unfortunately, I'm heavily influenced by you, which is very unfortunate. But my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like that i'm going to throw you under the bus for on behalf of what i'm about to say that's cool uh, my opinion is that there's there there's almost a, a a greater level of legitimacy when you have a panel of guys and girls that are from different styles evaluating your ability to perform your style it almost you know i i've had students come into my gym or prospective students come into my gym before and say well what's the best martial art out there and my my answer is always uh, whatever one you can stick with and, and master is the best one. It's not you know what I do is not necessarily the best thing for you. If you can stick with it, then it's it, that's that's the best thing. And but what I, what what I find with our organization and why I've quite frankly gate I stopped seeking promotion within my system and and, and seeking only from our associations because I find a different level, a higher level of legitimacy in black belt testing when you have masters and grandmasters from mm -hmm. other systems. That you're you're bringing your your stuff and you're putting it out there in front of them and saying evaluate me. Um, so how do you as a I mean, showing a guy how do you look at the other martial arts? Talk there first, and then we'll get into why why I bring up Cod in that conversation. Okay, well, what I look for, and I tell everybody else, it's just like if you go to a tournament and uh, you know all these individuals from different styles are going to be doing something. Well. If you're not a Shaolin practitioner, if you're not a Taekwondo practitioner, you cannot judge the sequence of the individuals. What you do, you look at the footing. No matter what style, if you don't have good balance, that's gonna be off. Are the blocks where they're supposed to be? The breathing, the eye contact, just the movement itself. Is it crisp? Is it sloppy? Um, I was judging a Chinese practitioner in a tournament in San Antonio, Texas, uh, some years ago, and one kid in that was sitting next to me, he said, "I have no idea what to do." I says, "Okay." He says he's going to do a tiger. So you 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 watch the hand. He's got becoming position here. If they're not in a position where a tiger would be cutting somebody, 
then you lower the score. Um, most of the time, whenever I'm judging, and I always have to go back to that, some of the other judges that have not had the experiences I do, they would give these guys high marks. I would lowball them. And they said, how come you're being so cruel? So, no, I'm being honest. That's what I am. And the same thing. Um, so it's not, okay, when you said uh, earlier, you said, what, what's the best style? Well, it's the style that you're practicing right then. And if that is not good for you, then what did you get in there in the first place for? Right, right. You know? right. So whatever you take, you have to give 100%. I'm not going to say 110% because that's impossible. You give 100% on the entity. And uh, I've got students, they, I don't mind hollering at them. I'm not mean, I'm not nasty, but they know when I am serious. Uh, if you're going to be doing this here, by God, what, would, what are you going to do if your mother or your father gets attacked and you have to save them? What are you going to do? Just say bye because they're going to die. You cannot do that. And so uh, I had one individual. Uh, he come from another school that didn't really care. And when he's punching, uh, he, his hands were not the way it's supposed to be. I mean, everything was wrong. Uh, not, it's not only my opinion, but it's my expertise. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. And so what I had to do is change all that. And when he's noticed that he becomes stronger by holding his hand a certain way or his feet or whatever the case may be, uh, he took a little bit of extra pride in himself. I said, now you're going to accomplish what you should have been paying for a long time ago. So the style doesn't really matter. It's, it's the individual. What I don't like, uh, we're going to get into cotton a little bit later, these, these homemade uh, forms. And no, no. <laughs> that is like the, it, it makes no sense to me. Uh, so let's go to, let's get into kata. Let's talk about kata for a minute. Cause I mean, you know, I come from hearts, you know, my traditional background, you know, I've got my contemporary background, my, my traditional background is a Taekwondo background, right. but I also have uh, shown her, I've trained with you in shown I've trained with um, uh, some Shotokan and, and um, other hard styles or soft styles. I feel mm -hmm. like, like judo. But talk to me about, the difference in your opinion as a grandmaster in the different styles and their katas, what, what you see is strengths and weaknesses. Well, you can actually put it in two different uh, categories. Uh, it's either linear or circular. All right. Uh, there's a lot of styles of a uh, hardcore styles and they're strictly linear. All right. They're going to go from point A to point B, boom, boom, boom. And a lot of times they're not successful because of that. Uh, with Amish, that way on the street, right? I mean, am I am I right to understand it that way? Oh yeah, oh yeah. They're linear, they're circular. Exactly, exactly. There's, there's aspects of linear, of course, but mm -hmm. so so when you, when you put them into this two categories of circular and linear, um, and we, we talk about bunkai, uh, we talk about. I mean, at the end of the day, all the martial arts is about self defense. Let's get real. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they're they're all about self defense. And so when you're looking at a kata. Uh, give me the strengths and weaknesses of the the main brands. Like let's, let's talk kung fu, not all the different details. Just kung fu, karate, taekwondo. Uh, those three systems. Give me some pros and cons of the katas within those systems, if you would. Well, taekwondo, their their katas actually came late. If when, when taekwondo was was first originated, it was to fight the a cavalry soldier, and so kata itself was put together out of bits and pieces from an, an outside source. Um, their performance, two elongated legs. I mean, I can pick, I, I can point out a lot of, uh, a lot of discretions on, on some of their stuff. Um, Go ahead, beat, and I'm a Taekwondo like, well, no guy, I mean, you know, so beat it up for a minute. Tell me, tell me the negatives, because I'm gonna ask for the positive sake. Tell me, come, give me a couple of negatives in Taekwondo. for all right, specifically well, first, the of all, first of all, a Taekwondo, they start like this here, all right? I said, okay, fight. And then all of a sudden they come up. I said, what is the difference between down here versus here? Well, I can't fight down there. Well, why practice on something of that nature? Which is one of the reasons that, you know, I, I shifted away from, from Kata altogether. Yes, sir. Uh, as a, as a 
practitioner. So give me some positives in Taekwondo. That's a, that's a pretty good, significant negative. Give me a positive. Positives, they are about the best kickers out there. Uh, they yeah. concentrate on high kicks, which means you have to do a tremendous amount of flexibility. Um, if you have the talent in Taekwondo, like uh, Hideyoshi, he can jump and, and kick six different people with one jump, one kick, and then land. That to me, I mean, you have a lot of taekwondoists uh, that are that way. Um, I mean, okay, what about, what about, let's go up into that. Give me a negative in Kung Fu. In Kung Fu? I can't think negative. of any. I can't think of anything. Kung Fu is a tremendous, uh, is a tremendous style. They're extremely fluent. Um, now, people don't, don't understand that. Americans, we try to do what the, the Asians, their bone structure is different than ours. If you look at a Korean, their elbow is not on the side, it's down below. And so when they start to making their moves, we have to figure out what the heck are they doing? And so we are a little bit awkward in our, in our body, in our anatomy than what they are. And so it's, it becomes easy. You see some of these little kids and uh, in Buddhism, you know, they're stretching here eight years old and that's what they do. They keep on going. So it's, it's a good style. As I say, I, as far as negative, uh, you have to have tremendous amount of uh, positive attitude to get in there. But I can't think of anything negative about the skills. Showing me. Give me, give me karate. Give me a neg as a as a bucket, all of karate into one. I'm not gonna let you separate it out. Give me a negative. A negative. Uh, it's almost impossible to become an expert in both the hands and the feet at the same time. Uh, taekwondo, outstanding with the feet. They do little with their hands. Very little with their hands. Shoin Ru excuse me, that what they practice on is equal amount of feet and hands. So you've got to be comfortable. If you're gonna be fighting on the side of a mountain, you're gonna need your feet to move your hands. If you're fighting inside of, of a swamp, you'll need your hands, all right? So our kicks, it's just like if you're gonna chop down a tree, what you do, you cut the same thing down and then you take the limbs off after the tree has fallen, all right? Um, uh, to me, Shoren Ru is the epitome of what all martial arts should look like. And I'm not trying to be prejudiced. It's well, you uh, are. That's okay. But there's nothing uh, wrong. I mean, my gosh, it's, it's your art. I want you know, you're allowed to be prejudiced. I mean, you know, I, I, I I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk Taekwondo up as a traditional art. I'm going to talk Krav Maga up as my primary art. I mean, you know, I, I've been doing Krav since '90. It's my primary martial art um I, I but there are also weaknesses in it I, I i'm not naive to think there aren't weaknesses in my in any of the things i've studied i've studied just like you i've studied a little bit of all of them uh, mainly because i wanted to learn what, what the strengths and weaknesses are mm -hmm. so let's transition to more of the contemporary stuff i want to hear your your thoughts on judo and 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 hapkido and aikido and uh, aikido is more traditional but i'm curious your thoughts on hapkido aikido packaged together and i'm curious your thoughts on brazilian jiu-jitsu and krav maga so let's start with the first two hapkido and aikido give me give me your give me your thoughts on those two well with hapkido you're basically looking at the same thing that you see when uh the japanese are performing all right. Exactly. Yeah. Because because the uh, the taekwondo they didn't have anything with their hands. What they did, they borrowed a lot of the techniques from the, from from the Japanese or the Okinawans, and they brought it down. So when you go to a, a taekwondo studio and you see hapkido, you have to become <laughs> proficient in the feet, and then they will teach you for extra money the hapkido. All right. Yeah, um. What was the other one? I, I couldn't hear. I lived that. I said, I've lived that exact thing. Oh yeah. You know, it's one, but, you know, I was taking Taekwondo at the same time I was doing Krav because I was realizing that with Krav, they're just giving it all to you right away. Mm -hmm. Where with, with Taekwondo, you have to pay your way. And I want to say it that way because you're paying with time, you're paying with money, you're paying with all of it. A very political martial art. Um, sure. it's been, been a experience. Uh, one of the most. Yeah. So what about, 
Okay. Let's, let's get you over to let's get you into more of the contemporary stuff. Talk about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. What's what? Give me some positives and negatives with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Well, if you plan on going, I mean, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is outstanding. However, uh, with police officers, what I do, and they want to take this Jiu Jitsu. Um, you worked with one officer that thought he's going to be doing this, and I told him, uh, you don't need. It. I said, first of all. How often do you go to the ground when you when you arrest somebody? He said, oh, about uh, 80% of the time. I said, then you're screwing up. You should not have to go to the ground. Maybe 10% of your time, you may you right. may have to fight. And so I told him, what you have to do is take it easy. So he goes to the academy and uh, was doing Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Gracie Jiu-Jitsu is good. All depends on the instructor. And right, right. Uh, he was out of commission. Oh, gosh. Three weeks, three, four weeks, something like that. He got hurt. Remember yeah. that guy? Uh, I remember. Uh, yeah, he was. He was on y'all's because I I warned him after because after he talked to you, he talked to me, and I warned him about the same thing. I'm like, dude, mm -hmm. um, not you know, it's not what you think it is. It's uh, you know, uh, and, and again, that my my background's heavy law enforcement, um, yeah. uh, and so I'm not a, I'm not a big fan. I, I actually sat through a 40 hour instructor course on. Uh, the Gracie system that that they they now teach to cops and it, it again it's there there's good stuff and there's good technique in there oh, but yeah. man I just I wouldn't attribute I wouldn't I would put my life on it that's for sure. Uh, well, but talk about the, well hold bit. on hold on <laughs> let's let's stay on that <laughs> subject. I I was invited out to uh, to more uh, to do defensive tactics for the department and. Uh, more, more Oklahoma, which is my old department. Yeah. Who invited me out there? Yeah, I believe I, you did. <laughs> I got <it> exam. <laughs> well, all of the officers were in the bleachers except for one individual. I mean, I was on the floor giving a little spiel. And um, this guy, I mean, the one that we're talking about, I mean, his arms are like this. He's a yeah, monster. Same, I had, and funny thing is, I think I told you this before you came down there, I had problems with him the first time I taught until mm -hmm. I choked. And then I had problems with him. It's Mark Snavely, great guy, yeah. great, uh, better cop, but he but relies on muscle and brute strength. And mm -hmm. you know he he wants to know you can take him. Uh, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So he was circling me, and I knew something was coming up. And I said, "All right, all right." And um, all of a sudden, here comes this bull. This monster <laughs> grabs me, and down yeah. we go. And I'm thinking, all right, this is not, this is too much. One of, one of, one of the guys, uh, you were about to get up and I could hear you clearly. One of the guys said, you got to help me. And he got, oh, hell, he's the grand master. He can take care of himself. Yeah, I, I was stopping right. to the problem. Like, no, let this go. I want to listen to you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Mark, he, I mean, he was, I guess he thought I was a pimple. And so all I did, I just come up and I grabbed one of his jugglers and, I said, you all right? Said, yeah, I'm fine. And he normally doesn't speak like that. I said, you sure? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> and by the way, not to beat up the guy, great guy, incredible cop. Yeah. Um, son of a bitch. I mean, if you're going to be in a fight on the street, you want that guy there. But he relies on, at least my experience, he relies too much on strength. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But part of that, I think, comes from... Um, a lack of, of confidence and self-esteem. And I'm not talking about him Mark because he's got plenty of confidence and self-esteem. I'm talking about the people that rely on strength, generally speaking, they're doing it because they just don't have technique. Oh, yeah. uh, they don't understand the the strength really is not in strength, uh, which mm -hmm. is that kind of sounds silly for me to say it that way. Well, no, no, it's true because when I took the guy down, I mean, I didn't use strength because if I use strength against him, it's like a two, uh, the thing is, with with two individuals, you got strength here. It's like you put a needle to each other, and you point and you're trying to figure out who's going to get who's going to get stuck first. And so, right. yeah, yeah, right. I'll let him I'll let him do all the strength, and I'll do the finesse, and that's what happens because I've taken kung fu some, and uh, more of wushu, and I've done these other things. So there are certain aspects I can put in there. And he's, you know, he almost went to sleep, almost knocked him out. That was my whole point, anyway. And, uh, and and what I love about him, though, once you once you showed it, well, he's one of those guys. Once you show him you're capable, he mm -hmm. wants to learn from you. And he, you know, he's one of the best students you have. Once you show him you're capable. Oh yeah. Um, and I, 
there's haters out there. We all got them. Uh, you know, I've got plenty of guys out there that want to run their mouths and, you know, it's all, it's easy to run your mouth till it's, till you're on the mat. Uh, exactly. Exactly. You know, uh, so let's, I want to, I want to shift over to Krav. Uh, my, my, you know, Krav my guys without question, my love, I, I, it's my primary art. It's what I, uh, attribute all of my training time to, um, Talk, talk about what you see as, as strengths and, and, and weaknesses in Krav Maga. Well, I don't see any strengths in, in Krav Maga. Uh, there's not a lot of kicking uh, other than that. As far as what I have seen, uh, not a lot of kicking. But it, as soon as you get your feet off the ground, then you're at the mercy of whoever's coming at you. But the hands, the arms, everything about, about your body is used for defense. And... Um, what y'all, what, 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 what Krav Maga, the Israeli uh, self-defense, is, is almost the same thing that I do, all right? Because I have, I put everything together from all of my... I'm sorry, strength. you said you don't see any strengths in it or you don't see any weaknesses in it? The, did I say strength? Yeah, you said you didn't see any strengths in it. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I meant, I meant weaknesses. Forgive me. Forgive me. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, all I, kind of strengths. I mean, it's, it's a I, want, I want to catch, I want to make sure I corrected that because I know there's going to be a lot of people listening to this and most of them are going to be my students. So I wanted to hear the great man say that it's good, not bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> no, no. no. So you're, you're not no. Any weaknesses in it because of the fact there's not a lot of high kicks and there's, that's, well, that's where you're going. I don't, I don't, um, I don't advocate high kicks at all. I don't either. If you have to kick basically above the knee, then uh, you're putting yourself in harm's way. Now, if you're like uh, Eddie Thomas, uh, Bill Wallace. Uh, yeah, definitely a small game. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're going to get great. nailed, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm just not, I'm not a great kicker. I mean, I'm strong with my with my linear kick, my straight-in kicks, and my my groin kicks. But beyond that, you know, I'm not, I'm not kicking above the, the waist. I'm just not going to. Well, a lot of times because of my age, arthritis, uh, I limit my kicks yeah, uh, I, as much. So, but my hands, I said, okay, you guys want to learn speed. So this is what you have to do. I said, I'm going to tell you where I'm going to hit you. And I'll even walk it to you and I come back. Are you ready? They said, yeah, boom. I said, okay, I thought you were ready. They said, what do you mean? Well, it's the speed. When we have the things of uh, the seven components of self-defense and speed and, and, and uh, strength are part of those, but the speed is number one. And yeah, yeah. I kind of sure. tell these individuals, you've got to get the job done now and not tomorrow. Don't think about it. Just react. If a fly gets on your nose, you think about, gee, I've got a fly on my nose. I'm going to have to get rid of it. No, you just automatically go for it. And so, so how do you do it's basically that way. You're, you're predominantly a traditional martial artist. Yes. So how do you reconcile adjusting your, because I know Sean Rue has adjusted and, and, and metamorphosed since you've, since you've obtained, uh, I'm going to call uh, authority over it. Uh, sure. You know, you, you've, and, and I'm not meaning this in a bad way, what I, what I, but I, I do want to kind of come right at you on this and say, okay, so you're a traditional guy and traditional guys generally say, do it my way, do it the way I've always done it, do it the way my instructor's always done it, the way my master's always done it, the way my grandmaster's always done it. That's not you though. So how do you reconcile as a traditionalist? Because uh, I, I mean, you teach gun, mm -hmm. you still teach, you teach, you teach all the traditional weapons, but you yeah. also teach stick knife and gun. Yeah. So talk about how do you reconcile that as a traditional martial artist? Because you still teach COD. I don't teach COD anymore. You know that. Uh, and again, that's not me bagging on guys that do it. Just not something I spend time on. Um, I, I, I use kata as an undertone um, from my experience, meaning that the katas that I've learned, I look into those and I pull the self-defense out of it and I teach the self-defense. Right. Um, so talk about as a traditional guy, how do you reconcile you, you adjusting your system for the modern battlefield of the street? Well, what I do, uh, I look at the street and I see, okay, you have combat no matter what time of the day, where you're at that kind of thing. And so uh, I use my imagination when I'm performing basics, kata or whatever the case may be, I put in real life situations in between those. Uh, Master Kuda, I love the man dearly, but uh, he, you know, he, he did not teach the Americans the same as he did the Okinawans. Very common. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's, it, you know, it, it happens. So all the self-defense that I have learned, I've learned it on my own. 
since I got back from Okinawa. Uh, there's a, a with the kata. There's a few few little tidbits that bother me forever, and so I changed it a little bit, not the essence of it, but I changed a couple of techniques. And then one of my students got assigned to Okinawa and showed him, and what did you know, Master could have changed <laughs> because of what <laughs> he said. It makes sense. I said okay, um, but um, what I try to do with Uchinu that means all encompassing. All right. Uh, I teach a little bit of Taekwondo because let's face it, you don't, when in Rome, do as the Romans, all right? And it's the same thing here. You might, you might as well know a little bit about everybody's style, but you still have your own, uh, your own style. Shonru, uh, Uchina Shonru, that's me. That's my heart and soul. Uh, but I've got all these other little things. I've got jungle warfare, uh, executive protection, of weaponry, uh, you know, today's guns versus, uh, you know, the ancient. I put all of that into this style. Uh, I've got uh, these, these kids. I said, okay, well, what we're going to do, we're going to be doing knives today. And they said, well, I thought that's a brown belt, black belt, or whatever. I said, this is my house, my studio, and I can teach you anything I want. If I think that you are capable of doing these, that's what we're going to do. And they said, well, what's the first attack? I put my hand behind the head, put, put a knife up on the throat. I said, now get out of it. And so they were cutting themselves. Not really, but, uh, right, right. So, but I try to give them a, a rounded uh, appreciation of everything. People here, well, I've heard that the tone of the fifth element. Well, that's utilizing uh, uh, explosive guns themselves. And so you might as well learn about it. Right. Yeah. So if I were uh, going to come to you and, and say, give me the the advice of, of, a, of a person that wants to become a martial artist, what, what advice would you tell them? Well, what I would do is sit down with them. I said, OK, we would just have a regular conversation about anything but martial arts, because I want to find out what kind of a person he is or she is. And um, if the conversation is is uh is presentable i'm using the wrong words but if it's satisfactory then uh, i want to know why they why does he or she want to become a martial artist and then if they're giving me all this uh blowing smoke up my backside then i'll say well i'll suggest x xyz school and uh, so then now if you're serious about it then this can be your home but, but your students, your students get it, uh, get it, get the fact that they, they get to train with you. Do they get that? I mean, a couple of them do. You know the, what I mean by that? The girl. I know that kept, yeah, no, that, the girl does. Know, but I mean, think about that. Anybody that's watching this, Grandmaster Rankin, this guy's been doing martial arts his whole life. Uh, and these, these, <laughs> these students dumb in most of the time to training with him. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, you think they get it? uh two of them do all right one of the individuals that came uh when i took over studio when i first moved here uh everybody was training oh good 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 and all of a sudden you're talking about killing stabbing cutting <laughs> and so they started going to places where they could be wet nursed again and which right. i don't the one individual when i took over he was going to he tested for his black belt in, in Tong Soo Do. And, uh, but his teachers, uh, no, they're gonna see it anyway, I don't care. They did not teach him properly. And yeah. so his parents, well, he said, um, he's talking to his father and he says, if it's okay with, with, with Master Rankin, I wanna start over. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, we won't say, I told you, hungry, that you're growling again. Uh, <laughs> I told him, well, I'm not going to take you all the way down to white belt. I said, you have too much knowledge, and you're a lot better than everybody else in this school. I said, so we, I dropped him down to, uh, we got three different divisions, or three, three levels of, of beginners. I'll put you on the very advanced level. I said, Would, does that sound fair? He said, yeah. I said, okay. 
So that's what we did. And um, I, the very first technique I told him, or I should say, I showed him is how to defend against an individual that is trying to kill somebody. And so I told him exactly what to do. I had Jeff, my son, uh, he had me down joking me. And so he was, he was down over like this. So I had Shane, actually, my, my son's he's, he's uh, over 200 pounds himself. He's, he's a big boy. But uh, Shane actually grabbed him and kept on going over. The momentum uh, made, made Jeff actually fly off of me and land on his back. And Shane is, is down on him. He's ready to punch him. I said, oh, okay. I said, uh, how was that? He said, wow, this is great. So I teach him real McCoy stuff. And uh, we, get, we get down and dirty. Did do, do association members get it? Uh, a lot of them do. Some of them do not. A lot of the uh, high ranks, uh, they do not. And for whatever reason, and it's, it's, um, it's heartbreaking because I'm doing everything in my power to get everybody together as one, one uh, uh, entity. And I'm falling short on that. Whatever the reason is, I don't know. Um, Actually, Actually, I'm going to stop you there. No, you're not. The directors are falling short and I'm going to call them out. That's the reality of it. They, they, and it, no, it's not you. It's the directors. And if they have a problem with that, they can give me a phone call and we can talk about it uh, or they can fly out here offline and then we can talk about it. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's where it falls short. Let's get real. I mean, you cannot be, there's no way you'd be responsible for a multi-state multinational organization as an individual, because it's going to fail if it's about you. And the problem with it is nobody seems to want to step up. And, and I, I shouldn't say it that way. There are some that step up, but there are a good quantity of directors. And you know who you are out there. Okay. That you've done nothing you've done nothing for the association. You've done nothing to, to promote Grandmaster Rankin's legacy. And that, to me, it's a shame because they don't get it. I don't, I don't really think, I, I think 10% get it, maybe 20%. Mm -hmm. the, the, I've been in different organizations. Uh, I've had organizations that I founded get taken from me. Uh, you know, the reality of it is, is that the difference in the USMAA is that it is non-political and non, and I'm not going to say it's non-style based because it's very much about style. It's very much about technique. It's very much about true martial arts, but what it's not about is ego. It's not about ego. So I, I don't think a lot of them get it. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I, speaking about ego, we've had the hall of fame for 21 years. And I've been to several others and ego was flaring there. Oh, we have terrible. never, we have never experienced it at our event ever. And uh, I mean, I could go to my grave today. No, nah, tomorrow will be all right. And um, I'll be quite satisfied. A little bit longer now, okay? <laughs> oh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was yeah. on the phone with the Grandmaster Bad the other day. We talked for quite a bit of time just chatting. And, uh, I think he agreed. I'm going to go and speak on his behalf. Sorry, Joe, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, a lot of people just don't get it. Um, and, and he's, he, like me, he has a, rich myself, Brian, we, we all, we just, we love you. We support you. And then the rat of us, we, we have our opinions and they're pretty strong. Um, and we have no problem speaking them out loud. And the reality of it is, is that uh, there's a lot of people out there that just don't get it. Um, and, and it's just like a, a, a black belt test. I don't think the people, and maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to go back to the 20, percent rule. I think 20% of the people that take a test under our organization understand and get the significance. I mean, my, my last black belt certificate has two memorialized grandmasters on there. Um, but also it, it's like a who's who of uh -huh. the real deal martial arts in America. We're on that certificate. I'm more proud of that than my first black belt certificate. And I could care less about that first black belt certificate. Oh, yeah. The guy was a jackass. Two, his system was junk, and, and three, it was all about money. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's just like, uh, really yeah. wasn't about you could have oh. about better than me. I mean, it's all about, you know, with me, it's about my students. I, I mean, if I'm not better than them, uh, don't come. If I'm not improving them, don't come. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not real realism, realistic street self-defense, don't show up. Um, yeah. 
so I, I don't think a lot of people get the the I mean, I hope your student, your your personal students get the the, the privilege they have to get to train with you. I, I really hope that more association directors um, take ownership of the association so that it has a chance to survive because it is so unique and so different within I this. Hope, I really hope and yeah, no, I hope they do too. Uh, but it seems like you know, I'm not making a big requirement. Uh, but yeah. at one time, uh, just to have a uh, contact, we had a form that two people, you and um, our Colorado director that filled out. Nobody else did. I said, okay, so I can't call everybody because it's too expensive. And so now we've started doing the Zoom and uh, we have yet have 100% of our directors attend. So, you know, I guess that that leaves the question is, you know, I hear that that in and I, I get this because I know you is that that's one of the the heart heartaches you have is, is the, the lack of commitment by the association. Exactly. So tell me, give me the the blessing it is to you. The blessing, the association. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the Everything about it. The reason why I, I come up with the USMAA is that other associations were strictly for black belts, black belts only and prominent black belts. So I'm thinking, all right, well, we need something that will bring everybody together as a group. And so in 77 is when I started putting all these things together. I established the association, but it started growing uh, shortly thereafter when folks uh, so it was happening. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting some terrific people. Uh, one of the nice individuals and uh, Hollywood did not go to his head was Chuck Norris. And um, I got, I learned a great from him uh, when I was competing. And so just being, uh, just being able to be around these people was a delight and the association allowed me to, to uh, you know, to be there. Um, the association connected you and me. And absolutely. Then, you know. And I mean, my gosh, I mean, think about it. for me, I mean, you're so many different. I told you this last night when we were talking, so many different aspects of my life. I mean, from just teaching me uh, technique and, and skill and tactics and all that jazz, that's great. I don't care about that stuff as much. Um, it was great, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, the mentorship the brotherhood the uh, you know as much as as much as a guy needs a dad in his life uh, you, you know you've been as much of that to me um, advice wise sounding more wise you, you've told me the things I didn't want to hear uh, when I needed to hear them even though I didn't want to hear them uh, you know you gave me sound advice uh, you promoted me and I'm not talking about rank I give a shit about that uh, I'm talking about promoted me as an individual supported me as an individual stood by me when I went through when I went through junk uh, I remember those days. Yeah, man, stuff, brother. I mean, just all kinds of mess after mess, just life. And and I'll tell you, you know, if the association does nothing other than that, praise God for the association. Um, what a shame that so many people miss out on that opportunity. And the funny thing is, I'm not unique or special. Um, all I've done is is pursued you in relationship and pursued um, the organization. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's a secret. Uh, here's the secret, guys. If you listen to this and girls. Uh, you want you want that kind of uh, benefit uh, that's not on paper pursue the man uh, on the screen with me uh, pursue other black belts around you uh, it's a choice and, and for me that's what I'll tell you man the greatest thing I've got out of that I'm going to use the word relationship I mean the relationship we have is is one of my most treasured things I have uh, and so I thank you for that I thank you for the association and we're like over time I, I, which doesn't surprise anybody that knows me um, so you know, I, I just want to wrap up with just your final thoughts. Do you have any final thoughts or anything else you want to talk about tactically, technically? Well, uh, tactically, you know, a lot of folks, they, they have a, mis uh, a misunderstanding of what tactics is all about or tactical. Um, and so what I do, I said, all right, have you ever been to a rodeo? They said, yeah. Did you see the bullfights? Not bullfights, but the uh, Bronx Bulls. Yeah. Did you see how they perform? Circular. All right. They took care of the cowboy way before the cowboy got on. Go to a zoo. Watch all the animals there. They are doing certain things. 
that, that that's already inbred. Copy what they're doing. Watch the insects. I said, all right, you know what a praying mantis is? They said, yeah. I said, okay, it's come up like this, and I pop them. Put all that together. If somebody's going to harm you or someone you love, utilize those combinations. They said, well, uh, I can't. I said, uh-uh. Four-letter words are not allowed in the studio. I said, you may not have the ability at this moment, but if, you, if the desire was there, then you'd be surprised what you can accomplish. I'll do a form. And uh, they no longer recognize me as a person because I, I, I changed my whole persona. And when I'm doing a form, especially a uh, Rohai, all right, I'm going into a fighting mode and I transport myself into a real battle. And so, um, I'm not bragging, but I one of the best battles they've ever seen. Uh, anybody, anybody seen you do Rohan? Uh, they know what you're talking about. They haven't seen you. And 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 again, shame on you for not getting involved. Those of you that are watching this enough to be able to see the man do the martial arts because someday, you know, the reality of it is that they're not going to be able to, and uh, they need to not miss out on the opportunities because life's way too damn short. Well, I tell you, the martial arts kept me uh, kept me healthy, kept me young. I mean, I'm 72 years old. Yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm fat, I got, I got my old turkey neck here, but um, it's it's kept me, it's kept my mind young. Uh, my counterparts around here, they say, well, how, how come you, you keep doing that? I said, because it's a lot better than changing the channel. Uh, yeah, I said, I get, I get a thrill out of it. Uh, now, after class, because I work out so hard, <laughs> I, I limped to the living room and Nancy says, oh, I had a good class, right? Nancy's my wife. Right. Said, oh, yeah. So I plopped down. <laughs> she laughs. And she said, but you love it, don't you? I said, with a passion. And some folks don't understand that. But it's well, I'm going to do a shameless. I'm going to do a couple of shameless plugs. One shameless plug is uh, Hall of Fame uh, 2021 may look different. We talked about that. We don't know yet what it's going to look like, but be involved. Uh, that's shameless plug number one. Number two, uh, mad love to uh, my triad buddies out there. Um, you know, uh, Joe and Rick, uh, they're rich. They're both going to be, um, Joe knows this, Rich, you don't know this yet. Um, I've already talked to Joe. I'm, I'm going to follow up these interviews with an interview of him. He doesn't get three, he gets one. You're special. I special. Yeah, because uh, I'm want to. i going to start documenting more of you, but I'm only going to document those people that really put in uh, and, and are all in because uh, we have some incredible, incredible black belts and incredible students, and we have some incredible masters and, and some incredible grandmasters in this association. It's shame on you if you don't know it uh, because you're the only one keeping you from knowing that. Uh, and then, you know, final, final shameless plug that I'm going to make out there is that, uh, you know, if you don't know this guy uh, over here, that's over, over there, that guy, uh, that's shame on you. Um, if you don't support that dude and what he's doing in the martial arts, um, shame on you. Um, you know, you, you should you should step up and step out and, and be involved. Um, you know, it, it's got to be bigger than you. Um, and so, Grandmaster, uh, thank you yet again uh, for letting me kind of pick your brain, pick your history part and, and document uh, we're going to do this again, by the way, because uh, I, I, I have some other things I think we're going to go down the route of in time. But uh, this three-part series was was a pleasure and an honor for me to get to to visit with you and uh, memorialize your life, your martial arts, um, your tactical mindset. Um, but most importantly, thank you for your relationship. Uh, I truly, truly have been blessed in my life to have you. And so with that, uh, with that, guys, um, Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you didn't like uh, what we had to say, tough shit. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I got a bar of soap for that kind of language. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. If you have further questions, though, ask them. Um, if you want to debate some of the things we talked about, debate them. Uh, you don't have to agree with everything we said. You don't have to agree with everything Grandmaster said. Uh, in fact, we encourage you to challenge the technique, challenge the conversation. Uh, so with that, uh, God bless you guys. Thank you, Grandmaster. Um, uh, that, that's a wrap, buddy. All right. God bless everybody. Happy uh, New Year, and uh, get your uh, get your anti-COVID shot when it comes uh, available. I am. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's me. <laughs> I love you all. Have a good one. Yeah.